بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين باعث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وسيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين المصطفى أبي القاسم محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وقرآنه الحميد وقوله الحق أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما أنت منذر ولكل قوم هاد صدق الله العلي العظيم This ayah which is ayah number 7 of surah al-Ra'd talks about a warner Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states indeed innama anta munzir indeed you are a warner you warn and then Allah states walikulli qawmin had and to every nation to every group to every society there is a guide somebody who is guiding that group, that nation, that society, that community. And this hadith, it is narrated, or this ayah, it is narrated that when this ayah was revealed, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, as narrated by al-Durr al-Manthur al-Siyuti, who is not of the followers of Ahl al-Bayt. In fact, he's one of the biggest mufassireen of the other school of thought. And also Al-Hakim and Nishaburi. And in other tafasir as well, they narrate this hadith. They say the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam said, after reading this ayah that Ya Ali, he spoke to Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam and he said, Ya Ali, Ana al -munthir. I am the warner. Wa anta al -hadi. and you are the guide. Bika yahtadi al min ba'di. With you, the mu'mineen, the believers are guided after me. Now, why does the Quran call the Holy Prophet a warner and the Imam here is the Hadi? Now, of course, the Prophet ﷺ is also a Hadi. In fact, one of the names of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is Al Hadi. The Prophet is a guide. These are one of the titles of the Holy Prophet. ﷺ. Like Al Mustafa, Al Bashir, and also Al Nadir, and also Al Siraj Al Munir. All these are titles of the Holy Prophet. One of them is also Al Hadi, the guide. He's a warner and he's a guide. Now, what is the difference? The warner is usually in the Arabic language referred to as a person who first brings the news. For example, a nation needs to investigate a threat or let's say a group of individuals. Recently we've had wildfires that engulfed the houses of many, unfortunately. So suppose these individuals in that city, they wanted to hear or figure out or assess how wild is this, is this fire? How great is it? How dangerous is it? So they would send somebody to go out to the field, assess this fire and its greatness, and then comes back 
And this individual would tell those people. So suppose they send five guys, five people, for example. They tell them, go, assess this danger, and then come back. They send them individually. The first person who comes back with the news, the first one, so they send five people, for example, the first one comes back. The first one says, this fire is so great that, for example, we need to vacate our homes because it may engulf our homes and endangers our life. This is the first person. This first person is known as the warner, al-nadir, al-munzir. This is the first person because he's the first one to warn about the threat. And then what happens then? When the others come, they are not called warners anymore. When they come and they say, oh, this fire is dangerous, they say, yes, we know that already. We heard that. They merely confirm. They confirm what the warner has stated. So the warner, the first person brought the news. He brought the first news. The others confirmed. And so here, the Holy Quran refers to the Holy Prophet as a warner, an adir. He warns people about the akhirah, about al-qabr, the grave and its dangers. He warns people about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He warns people about the disobedience, the danger of the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He warns them about the punishment and the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all the tasks and the duties of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In addition, of course, to guiding the people, after warning them, he also guides them, he teaches them. He tells them how to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what to do, what sort of actions they should follow. We have some actions that are haram. Sins, they're forbidden. Anybody who commits these actions which are unlawful, which are forbidden, he or she has committed a sin for which there will be a punishment unless the individual does istighfar in this dunya. And the hadith states, out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will give the servant seven hours before that sin is written in his book. Seven hours he is given for tawbah, for istighfar. That's why brothers and sisters, if God forbid shaitan makes an individual deviate from the sarat al-mustaqim, from the straight path, then immediately do istighfar. This individual should immediately do istighfar. Do not postpone. That individual should not postpone it. Postponing the istighfar and the tawbah is called in the Arabic language Tasweef, tasweef means just postponing, delaying, procrastinating. And that's what Imam al Sajjad alayhi, refers to in Munajatu Ta'ibin or Munajatu Shakin. To sawifuni bitawba. My nafs, Ya Allah, not only does it drive me to commit sins, of course, he's talking about an nafsul ammarati bisu, the evil commanding nafs. That essence or self of the individual that drives him to do bad things. He says, not only does it drive me to do bad things, but it also makes me procrastinate doing the good things. So, this is the duty of the messenger. That he tells them that people, when you commit a sin, immediately do istighfar. So we have these actions that are haram, forbidden. He tells us this. These are the duties of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Then we have some actions that are halal, allowed. They're allowed. Some actions that are wajib, obligatory. Leaving them is a sin. So the haram, the forbidden actions, doing them is a sin. The, hal the wajib, the obligatory Leaving them is a sin. And then we have an action, some actions that are mubah. Mubah. Means they're, they're, they're allowed. 
They're allowed. We have some actions that are makruh, which means doing them is not haram, but it's not recommended. We have some actions that are mustahab, which means they're not obligatory, but doing them is highly recommended. Like for example, Salat al-Layl. It is not wajib, but it is highly recommended. So we have haram, we have makruh, we have mubah, we have mustahab, and we have wajib. These are the five things we have. These are the duties of the Holy Prophet to tell us these things. So he is also a hadi. However, the ayah when it states, وَلِكُلِّ قَوْمٍ had Every nation, every time, every group will have a hadi. They will have somebody who will guide them. This ayah confirms and proves that there must be, is one of the proofs, that there always has to be a hujjah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth. There always has to be a guide. This guide is one of the imams, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhim, the infallible divine followers and successors of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Starting with Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wa salam as the hadith itself that we mentioned from al-Siyuti and also al-Hakim al-Naishaburi and other mufassireen they stated that the Prophet said, I am the guide. In one hadith, Al-Hakim, for example, he says the Prophet took the hand of Imam Ali and he put it at his chest. So he took the hand of Amir al-Mumini and he put it at the Prophet's chest. So the Prophet put it at his own chest. He said, Anal Mundir. I am the Mundir. I'm the warner. And then he put the hand back on the chest of Amir al-Mumini, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi, and said, Wa anta al-Hadi. And you are the guide. So, after the Holy Prophet, Amir al muminin is the guide. And then after Amir al muminin it is Imam al Hassan, and then Imam al Hussein, and then the nine Ma'asumin from the progeny of, Amir, of uh, Imam al Hussein, salamullah alayhi. And this also, brothers and sisters, proves and confirms that indeed Imam al Mahdi, ajalallah ta'ala, farajahu sharif, is alive. And he is on this earth guiding humanity as Imam al-Sadiq says that he is like the sun behind the clouds just because we cannot see it doesn't mean we cannot benefit from it so all the Imams السلام, are guides they guide people to the straight path and our Imam al-Hadi salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi Ali ibn Muhammad al-Naqi or al-Hadi al-Naqi salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi is no exception. And also he is given the title of al-Hadi. He was a alim. He was a scholar. And this is not only by us. I mean to us, the followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, we know that he's not only a alim, a scholar. He's an imam al-Ma'asum alayhi salam. But for example, some of the people in the other school of thought like Ibn al-Imad al-Hanbali. He has a book called Chadarat al-Dhahab. He, when he refers to Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam, he says, Kana faqihan imaman abida. He says he was a faqih, a jurist, an imam, a leader, and a abid, a worshiper. Now, just to clarify, by the way, a faqih, a faqih, when we say faqih, we don't mean the faqih who is like a mujtahid. No, we just want to clarify here. When we say our imams, alayhi salam, were fuqaha, it means they don't, they, they were not mujtahideen. Because a mujtahid, somebody who becomes a faqih, who is not a ma'asum, he is not a ma'asum, he's not infallible. Like our ulamas, may Allah bless them, inshallah, those fuqaha, those grand jurists. They invested a lot of time years of their lives studying the Holy Quran, the tradition of Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam to derive laws. To derive laws. Our Imams alayhi salam their teacher is ultimately Allah because Allah taught, you know, Jibra'il. Jibra'il taught the Holy Prophet. The Holy Prophet then taught Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam 
and so on and so forth. Imam Amir al Mumineen taught Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein, and every Imam was teaching his son. Every Ma'asum is teaching his son. And they don't, you know, they are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the law. They don't need to study. They are guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, their fiqh, their fiqh, their ilm, their knowledge, they are a source of fiqh. They are a source of, of jurisdiction. They're the source of it. It's not that they learn it from somebody other than the ma'asum alayhi salam. And it's not that maybe they're right or maybe they're wrong. No. They're always right because they're the source of fiqh. All right? So just to clarify here. So, Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam was the scholar, this alim, as agreed upon by some Muslims and even other Muslims as well. Other Muslim scholars, not from the school of Ahl al-Bayt, like al dhahabi for example, he has something, he says something similar about Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we find that Imam al-Hadi salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi is a alim, a scholar, a guide, somebody who is guiding the people to the straight path. And he had several students as well. One of the students is a man by the name of Ibn Sikkit. This man is a alim, is a scholar of language. He was alim of language. One day, this Ibn Sikkit is brought by Al Mutawakkil Al Abbasi. Al Mutawakkil Al Abbasi brings him and he tells him that who is better? He asks Ibn Sikkit, who is better? Hassan and Hussein or my two sons. He has a couple of sons. He says, who is better? Them or Hassan or Hussein? Ibn al-Sakid gets really angry. What is this? He says, are you crazy? He says, even Qambar, Qambar, the servant of Imam Ali alayhi salam is better than your two sons. Who are your sons compared to Imam Hassan and Hussein? They don't even compare to Qambar. You know, it's interesting because one Arabic poet, one Arabic poet, he has a, a very nice poem about Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayh, where he tells Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam, he says, Qasawka Aba Hassanin Bisiwak Wahal bittawdi yuqasu al-dhar Anna sawawka Bimanna wawka وَهَلْ سَاوَوْ نَعْلَيْ قَمْبَرْ He says, O oh Abu Hassan, O oh Amir al-Mu'mini alayhi salam, they started equating you, they're starting to equate you with other people. With other people. And can they really equate a mountain to a dust, a particle of dust? You take one particle of dust, one grain of sand, that, you know, when the wind comes, it starts to blow it right, you know, left and north and south and east and west, this dust. Can you compare a dust, a grain of dust, or a grain of sand to a mountain? You can't. He says, how can they compare you? And he's just drawing an analogy. Ya Ali, you are like a mountain, and they're like a grain of dust. He says, and how can they even draw an analogy when they did not even, they're not even equal to Qambar? You know, people, those such individuals are not even equal to Qambar, your servant. What about you? And similarly here. So Ibn Sakit, Allah Ta'ala alayhi, gets angry and he says, What are you crazy? Even Qambar is better than your two sons. So Mutawakkil gets upset and he says, drag his tongue out of his head. So they drag his, his, his tongue out of his head. And of course, he starts bleeding and he dies as a shaheed. This man was one of the students of Imam Al-Hadi. And another student is a man by the name of Uthman ibn Sa'id Al-Amri. Uthman ibn Sa'id was one of the four representatives of Imam Al-Mahdi. Allah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. Uthman ibn Sa'id is one of the students of Al-Imam Al-Hadi salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. So here we have a couple of examples and there are others as well. 
But those two individuals, great ulama, great scholars, were the students of Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam. And Imam al-Hadi continued to be a guide to people despite the pressure he was facing. He was summoned from Medina of the Holy Prophet to Samarra, Surah Man Ra'a. You know, Samarra, he was brought there in the city of Askar, the city of the military. Under these difficult conditions, despite all this, he still managed to teach people about the path of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam He still managed to teach people about the haqq, the truth, the sarat al-mustaqeem. And they used to refer to him. They used to refer to the Imam alayhi salam when they had difficulties, when they had issues. It is said one day they caught a man who was not a Muslim who committed adultery or fornication. He committed a sin with another lady, with another lady who was a Muslim. He was not a Muslim. He committed a, a sin with a non-Muslim. They caught him. The minute they caught him, he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So then they brought him to the court. They didn't know what to do. They said, should we forgive him now because now he's become a Muslim? Or shall we punish him? Some people said, let's forgive him. Others said, no, he has to be punished. So they went to Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam. They said, what shall we do, Ibn Rasulullah? He said, you have to punish him. They said, why? Now here, Imam al-Hadi, salamullahi alayhi, he used the guidance given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knew that this man is not genuine. He knew that. He knew that. So, he said, what did he say? They asked him, why, Ibn Rasulullah? He said, because of the ayah, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَلَمَّا رَأَوْ بَأْسَنَا قَالُوا آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ when they saw our punishment coming, they say, we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man, had he not been caught, he, had he not been caught at this time and done tawbah before he was caught, then yes, he would have been forgiven. But since he was caught and then he said, you know, I now I'm a Muslim. He said, no, now he has to be punished. And this, of course, from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah enabled the imam to see what's in the heart of this man. He saw what's inside his heart. And of course, not everybody can do this and not anybody can do this. And that's why this holy imam, alayhi salam, continued to be a guide to people and continued to be a source of guidance to the straight path and Hence, he is given this name or the title Al-Hadi, Al-Hadi. And despite all the pressure and despite all the difficulties on this Imam, he still gave us also, brothers and sisters, a great treasure. And that is Ziyara Al-Jami'a Al-Kabira. A Ziyara Al-Jami'a Al-Kabira. One man, the story is mentioned in in Mafatih uh, al-Jinan of Shaykh al-Abbas al-Qummi. He states that a man joined a caravan. I will summarize the story. If you want to refer the, the full version, refer to Mafatih al-Jinan just after a ziyar al jamaa al-Kabira. You'll see this story. You'll see that this man says, or, or after Ziyat Ashura, one of those two, either after Ziyat Ashura or Ziyar al jamaa al-Kabira. The story is mentioned in Mafatih al-Jinan. He says, that I joined a caravan to go for Hajj. On the way to Hajj, he says, I got lost from this caravan and we were in an area, he's from Iran, he said, we were in an area in Iran that did not speak Farsi. So this area did not speak Farsi and in the middle of the night, it was cold, I lost the group. I didn't know what to do, I was scared. So I stood there worried asking Allah for guidance, for help. He says, then a man came to me speaking to me Farsi, the Farsi language. He said, what is the matter? I told him, you know, the matter is that I got lost from my group. He said, then read Ziyarat Ashura. He said, I read Ziyarat Ashura, I came back. 
He said, what are you doing here still? He said, I read Ziyarat Ashura, I haven't found, I have nothing happened. He said, okay, read Ziyarat Al-Jama' Al-Kabira. He said, I read Ziyarat Al-Jama' Al-Kabira. He said, then do Salat Al-Layl. He said, I did Salat Al-Layl. He said, then, I, then he came, he said, what are you still doing here? He said, you know, I read Ziyarat Ashura, I read Ziyarat Jama' Al-Kabira. And he said, you know, the interesting thing, this, this man says, I knew Ziyarat Ashura, I knew Ziyarat Jama', but I did not have it memorized. So I didn't know how is it that I was reading them out of memory. I, I don't even know Ziyarat Ashura and Ziyarat Jama' Al-Kabira. Nonetheless, I read them. Then this man said, come with me, come with me. He took my hand, he took me through a few steps, and he said, isn't that your group and your caravan? He said, yes, that is my group. He told me, listen, always take care of Ziyarat Ashura. Read Ziyarat Ashura, read Ziyarat Ashura. Read the Ziyarat al Jama' al Kabira. Read the Ziyarat al Jama' al Kabira. Read the Ziyarat al Jama' al Kabira. Do Salat al Layl. Do Salat al Layl. Do Salat al Layl. He said, The man went. He said, And I joined my group. Then I started thinking to myself, Who is this man who spoke Farsi in this area of Iran that nobody speaks Farsi? And then he came and he brought me here. How did, and then he said, and Then it dawned upon me that this was the holy Imam. عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف الإمام المهدي المنتظر سلام الله عليه. So brothers and sisters, this is a ziyar al jamia al kabir and the Sheikh Abbas al Qummi, by the way, is referred to among the ulama as al muhaddith al Qummi, means the one who narrates hadith. Sheikh Abbas knew chains of narrate when he used to narrate hadith. May Allah bless his soul. Even though he he died only a few years ago, he's from the last century. He's from the last century. When he used to narrate a hadith, he would write the whole chain of narrators. He would note the whole chain of narrators to the Imam, the Ma'asum, which means he does not just say, I read in so-and-so book, but he would actually quote, 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 until he takes you to the source. So he would not just write any story that he hears in his book, Mafatih al-Jinan. And then this Imam al-Hadi, salamullahi alayhi, with this treasure that he gave us, brothers and sisters, we have to take care of this treasure, this Ziyar al jama al kabira We should try to read it. In fact, it is highly recommended whenever you go for Ziyar, inshallah, to any of the shrines of the Ma'asumeen, alayhim salam that you read Ziyar al jama al kabira It is highly recommended to read it on a regular basis because it contains some of the treasures about Ahlul Bayt and their infallibility, salamullahi alayhim ajma'in. Nonetheless, after spending this time of enlightening people's hearts and minds at the age of 42. Then Al-Mu'taz Al-Abbasi, Al-Mu'taz Al-Abbasi, he puts the poison to the Imam Al-Hadi alayhi salam at the age of 42, or some say at the age of 40. So whether 40 or 42, this great Imam leaves this dunya and next to him was Imam al-Askari, sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi, his son, who was crying about his father, mourning his death. And then he took care of the burial of his father in the city of Samarra, away from his home in Medina. And he buried him right there, and even the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could not bear to see the shrine of Imam al-Hadi and Imam al-Askari. And, and until recently, a few years ago, they tried to demolish. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَاكِرِينَ They plot, and Allah plans on plots. And Allah is the best plotter against what they plot. The shrine, alhamdulillah, is getting rebuilt and will be rebuilt, and so will the other shrines of Ahlul Bayt. They will also be rebuilt, inshallah, sooner or later. And we have to constantly do the ziyarah of this imam, visit this imam, to convey our salam to this imam, to convey our bay'ah and allegiance to this imam, as well his grandson, Imam al-Mahdi, ajjal Allah ta'ala, farajahu sharif After burying him, and taking care of him, Imam al-Askari alayhi salam was in great sadness. Uh, I say, Ya Imam al-Askari, when you buried your father, Imam al-Hadi alayhi salam, did you remember Imam al-Sajjad alayhi salam? When he came to his father, Imam Hussein, after three days, uh, 
He saw the body of his father, Imam al Hussein, lying in Karbala. He looked at his father, he hugged his father, the body without the head, and he said, in Husni, Oh, Father, Ya Aba Abdullah, my grief is for eternity, and my nights are sleepless, Ya Aba Abdullah. Then he saw the bodies of the companions all lying on the plains of Karbala. And he saw Bani Sa'ad or Bani Asad. Bani Asad came and they started helping the Imam alayhi salam bury the bodies. He then buried the body of his father. And next to it he buried his son Ali al-Akbar alayhi salam. Then he dug a hole and he buried the companions. Then he went towards the Furat. He told them, is there anybody left? They told him, yes, O oh master, there is one body next to the river of Furat. It is cut into pieces. Whenever we lift a piece, another one falls. He went, he saw the body of his uncle, Abil Fadl al as he picked up his right hand, it is said he kissed his right hand and he said, Amma Abel Fadl, Alayka Minni Salaam, Oh my uncle Abel Fadl, I wish you would come and see how your sister, my aunt Zainab, is doing now after you. Ya Balfadl, I, 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 إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أمن يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء 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 اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله 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 يا بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها اكشف عنا السوء يا الله اغفر ذنوبنا يا الله إلهي بالإمام الهادي اقض حوائج المحتاجين من المؤمنين والمؤمنات يا الله شافي وعافي جميع مرضى المؤمنين والمؤمنات رب اغفر لي ولوالدي وارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اجزهما بالإحسان إحسانا وبالسيئات غفرانا اللهم عجل لوليك الفرج واجعلنا من شيعته وأنصاره وأعوانه اللهم كن لوليك الحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى أبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم نقسم عليك بالزهراء فاطمة أرزقنا شفاعة الزهراء يا الله يا الله يا الله لقضاء الحوائج ولشفاء المرضى ولكشف هذه الغم عن هذه الأمة 
ولتعجيل فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات لا سيما أرواح موات الجالسين والحاضرين رحم الله من يقرأ السورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات